Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. This is case study number 12, which is a patient who is presenting with swollen cervical lymph nodes. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the I button in the, on the upper right-hand corner of the video. Um, I really appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank everybody who has contributed. I really appreciate uh, your contributions and your consideration. All right, so we got a 24-year-old black man presenting to the clinic complaining of some quote-unquote cysts on his neck, which he first noted um, while shaving, and I'll just say he noticed them a couple months ago, and he'd like to have them removed. On review of systems, he endorses intermittent episodes of cough, chills, and night sweats, which started occurring two weeks ago. He attributes all his symptoms to a bout of COVID for which he tested positive last month, but would like to know why none of this has gone away. He denies sick contacts or recent travel out of the country. He works as an Amazon delivery driver and is sexually active with multiple women and inter intermittently uses protection. He drinks rarely, does not smoke cigarettes. He endorses vaping and occasional cannabis use. Past medical history is unremarkable. He's on no medications. Vitals are within normal limits. And his weight is down from 180 to 155 over the course of a year. So what are we going to do by way of physical exam here? So we can be pretty comprehensive. He's in the clinic. He's not in any distress or an emergency or anything. So he's in no apparent distress. Pretty much everything is normal except for his lymph node exam shows a non-tender cervical lymphadenopathy. Um, but otherwise, everything is fine. Okay, so what now? We need to formulate our differential. So we've got a patient who has swollen lymph nodes, and he's got some systemic features um, like the weight loss and the night sweats, and he's also got a cough. Okay, so we need to include the big three uh, for cervical lymphadenopathy, um, and that's going to be the lymphomas and mono. Uh, so he's definitely in the age range for all three of these. They tend to be younger people, except for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which tends to be in a slightly older crowd. Uh, because he's got a chronic cough, we need to consider the possibility of sarcoidosis. Uh, we need to consider tuberculosis. And again here, with the cervical lymphadenopathy and the constitutional signs, we do need to consider acute HIV infection. I mean, he is sexually active. He's not using protection. Uh, however, typically with HIV, we usually, if it's a man, we tend to see it in men who have sex with men and uh, in IV drug users. It's very uncommon for a man to get HIV from a woman. It does happen, but it's less common. And then there's the possibility of leukemia, considering that he does have these constitutional signs. So what are we going to do uh, for our workup? So we're going to get routine labs. We're going to get an HIV serology. Very easy to get. We can rule it out. And because he's got a cough, we're going to get a chest x-ray. We're also going to get a chest CT with contrast because there is the possibility um, of uh, a mediastinal process going on here. Uh, and then we're going to get cervical lymph node biopsy. Now, why do we do that? Well, we're going to do it because he's got the swollen lymph nodes and the constitutional signs. Lymphoma is a major possibility. Now, could you do all of this and wait for it to come back normal and then get the biopsy? Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, this approach would be most timely. Now, what I want you to know is that this is an excisional biopsy. We're not going to do a needle biopsy. Needle biopsies are good if we're thinking about tuberculosis or something like that. But if we're testing for lymphoma, it's not very useful to get a needle biopsy because uh, what you'll typically see with that is normal cells. So make sure that this is an excisional biopsy. On your multiple choice questions, they may throw a needle biopsy in there as a wrong answer choice. What do we find? Everything is normal. So if you were to start out by getting those five things, you would then definitely proceed to the excisional biopsy. We do get the excisional biopsy, and what we see is nodular sclerosis Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
Now the diagnosis is Hodgkin's lymphoma. The next thing we do typically after any cancer is we go into staging. So what we're gonna find with staging is that there are three major factors uh, that we take into consideration. Number one, how many lymph node chains are involved? Number two, is there involvement both above and below the diaphragm or just above the diaphragm? And number three, is there involvement of extranodal sites, namely the liver and the bone marrow? So we're gonna get a CT abdomen and pelvis, we're gonna get a PET scan, and you may or may not include the bone marrow biopsy. We're going to inform the patient of the cancer diagnosis and reassure him. And then, of course, because this is cancer, we're going to refer him to hematology and oncology and also to radiation oncology. Hodgkin's lymphoma is a, an uncommon hematologic malignancy. However, it's common on tests and it arises from mature B cells. There is a bimodal distribution, it tends to be younger people, 18 to 35, and also um, you, you get another peak uh, over the age of 50. Clinically, it presents with enlarged non-tender lymph nodes, and in about a third of patients, they'll get the so-called B symptoms, which we also see in non-Hodgkin's, and we also see it in multiple myeloma, and those are things like fever, unintended weight loss of more than 10%, and or night sweats. Most commonly, the lymph nodes are going to be either cervical or supraclavicular. And cough and shortness of breath may be present if there's mediastinal involvement. Now, we didn't see that in this patient, but we did see a cough. Hmm, why? We don't really know. I mean, he vapes, he smokes weed, that can cause a cough. Uh, but, you know, maybe it's just there. Uh, but that was a good reason to get the CT. Now, the diagnosis rests on pathologic analysis. We can't really tell whether this is Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's just based on the presentation. They appear very similar. The only real way to tell them apart is through that excisional biopsy. Hodgkin's will show Reed Sternberg cells and remember from step one what those look like. They're the owl eye cells. Now, for staging, I already kind of explained that. Stage or one through four, you'll see A or B added on to that stage. A is just simply if there's none of those B symptoms, B is if there are. The management is ABVD chemotherapy. You should know that if this were non Hodgkin's lymphoma, the management would be RCHOP. You can look up what that stands for. ABVD chemotherapy, you should know the side effects of each of these drugs. So, adriamycin causes a dilated cardiomyopathy. Bleomycin causes pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, vinblastine causes peripheral neuropathy. And radiation increases your risk of leukemia and other cancers. Okay, so some of the differentials, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has a very similar presentation, can only be excluded on biopsy. Mononucleosis tends to be a tender lymphadenopathy. It's also self-limited and resolves within weeks. It's not something that lasts months. You may also uh, appreciate some splenomegaly. Sarcoidosis, more common in women. You'll typically on chest x-ray be able to appreciate bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. Tuberculosis, look for a recent travel history and prevailing pulmonary symptoms like hemoptysis and then the cavitating lesion on chest x-ray. With acute HIV infection, uh, they tend to, they do have lymphadenopathy, but they have predominating flu-like symptoms. And remember this patient, because he's a man who has sex with women, is a little less likely to have HIV, but we still check for it. And then lymphocytic leukemia, any leukemia really look for uh, disturbances in those cell lines. So they're gonna have low red blood cells, uh, which is anemia, and it's gonna be pallor and fatigue, low white count, that's gonna be uh, infections, and low platelets, that's going to be uh, purpura and so forth. This is gonna be confirmed with bone marrow biopsy. So to recap, Hodgkin's lymphoma is a heme malignancy arising from B cells. It's a non-tender cervical or supraclavicular lymphadenopathy. That's the most common presenting symptom. Keep an eye out for those systemic B symptoms. They occur in about a third of patients. The definitive diagnosis is, is by excisional lymph node biopsy, which will distinguish between Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. 
When you make a diagnosis of Hodgkin's, then you need to do staging. So get a CT of the abdomen and pelvis, a PET scan, and a bone marrow biopsy. And the management is ABVD chemo and radiation.